Hey everybody, welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about medical imaging. Like if you break your arm when you fall off a skateboard, you can go to the doc, she gets an image, gets you all fixed up. So we know it's helpful. I mean, she even gave me a lollipop. But we want to know, can the radiation dose we receive from these images, can it be harmful? Can it make us sick? That's what we're going to talk about today. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Medi Fizman. I am a medical physics professor who has spent my whole career studying how radiation interacts with the body for the purpose of improving how we image, diagnose, and treat disease. So with that, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start the video with a disclaimer. This video is for informational purposes only. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to get a medical image and you're concerned about radiation, please talk with your doctor, ask any questions, voice any concerns. Also, all the information I give here and the numbers I use in this video, I've left references and links to that information in the description down below. So if you want to learn more after you watch those, this video, check those out, all right? So medical imaging, what is it? So for the purposes of this video, we're going to group it into two categories. There's the imaging that uses ionizing radiation, and there's the imaging types that use non-ionizing radiation. So we're talking about X-ray radiographs, CT scans. These use X-rays. There's also SPECT and PET scans that use radio tracers. They use ionizing radiation to form the image. And then there's things like MRI and ultrasound, and they use magnetic fields, radio frequencies, sound waves to use their imaging, so non-ionizing radiation. And we're going to focus on the type that uses ionizing radiation. And when I say that, I mean X-rays and gamma rays with enough energy when they pass through your body to do damage to the molecules and atoms in your body. So X-ray imaging, what are we talking about? Well, when they turn on the x-ray imager and the x-rays pass through your body, they produce this image. And we see in the image this fuzzy gray region that represents your soft tissue. And in this region, some of the x-rays get attenuated or absorbed by your tissue. And then there's the bright raw white regions. Those are high attenuation like bone, very dense materials. They attenuate and absorb a lot of the x-rays in these regions. And that's what produces the image, the attenuation and absorption of the x-rays as they pass through your body. Now, what about a CT scan? Now, for a CT scan, they're basically producing a standard x-ray of your body. But what they do is they spin that source all around you while they're making images, and they get an image at each angle as they spin that source around you. They take all of these images and combine them together to make one image of a single slice of your body, just the portion where the x-rays pass through, and that's called a CT slice. So for a typical study, they'll get a slice at one position, and they'll move the table, and they'll get a slice at another position, and they'll move the table. And they keep doing that, and they get a whole series of slices that will produce a 3D image of a certain region of your body, like your lungs or your brain or whatever it is they're interested in imaging. So what we know with x-rays and CTs is that as the x-rays pass through your body, our body is absorbing some of those x-rays, and that can cause damage to your tissue. That's what we're talking about today. Can this be harmful to us? Okay, so this dose, what is it? Well, we're talking about basically the energy that our body absorbs from the x-rays when we take the image. Now, I've got a whole video about the risks of radiation in general, and I talk about radiation and dose and what it is and how we measure it. So if you're interested in learning more about radiation doses, go check that out after you watch this. But for our purposes, we're talking about doses, and you'll hear people say units for dose of one gray or one sievert when you're talking with your doctor or a physicist or you know, fancy science people. And in medical imaging terms, we talk about doses on the order of one milligray, 0 0.001 gray, or 0 0.1001 sievert, a millisievert, right? And that's not to be confused with a milli vanilli. I know, I know, bad joke. You, you, you gotta be old to get that joke, so I hope at least one other person, old person on the internet, watches this video and can appreciate that. But anyway, 
when we're talking about imaging doses for typical uh, medical imaging, like a CT scan or let's say a chest X-ray, the dose would be on the order of 0.1 milligray, so 0 0.001 gray. Uh, for a typical CT scan, it might be on the order of 0 0.01 gray or 10 milligray. And then for a PET scan with a CT combined, you would say about on the order of 20 milligray or 20 millisieverts. So what we want to know is, is this dose harmful to us? Can it make us sick? Now, let's look at the effects of radiation. What kind of effect can radiation have on us? Now, there's several types of effects, and the first one we'll talk about is the deterministic effect. This requires a minimum dose to your body before this effect will occur. The severity of that effect will increase as the dose you receive goes up. And typically, after the exposure is over, the severity of these deterministic effects will decrease over time. Basically, they fade and go away. The first one we'll talk about are radiation burns. So if your skin receives about two gray of dose, you'll start to see reddening on your skin, much like a sunburn. And so this is called a radiation burn. And as the dose to your skin goes up, that sunburn or that burn will get worse. Another one would be acute radiation syndrome or acute radiation sickness. And this is the type of sickness you see in movies when people get irradiated. They get nauseous, they start vomiting, their hair falls out. This is what we're talking about here. So this takes a, basically a whole body dose. Your whole body would have to receive radiation all at once very quickly. And you would need to receive about 0.7 to 1 gray whole body dose before you start to feel this sickness. Now, as your whole body dose goes up, the intensity of that sickness will get worse and worse. Think about this now. With an x-ray or a CT or a PET image, your dose is about 0 0.02 gray or less. So we're way below that threshold where these effects start to occur, right? Orders of magnitude. In fact, you would need to receive 70 whole body CT scans all at once just to get to that lower threshold where you might start to feel sickness, right? So I don't think we're ever going to see these types of effects. Wait for it. Wait for it, Charlie. Wait for it. And... However, there is an imaging modality called fluoroscopy. And this is basically taking a, an X-ray movie. So instead of just getting a single X-ray image, they leave the beam on and they get a movie of what's going on inside your body. So here you see someone swallowing some barium contrast, and you can see that move as it, as it goes down their esophagus. And these are used for things like placing catheters or swallow tests or, you know, accessing and assessing joint motion. So for fluoroscopy, typically we're talking about doses of about 0.1 gray up to even as high as 2 gray for really long fluoroscopic procedures. And these are a small number of procedures that get that high, but some do. So now remember our threshold for radiation burns was too gray. So there is a chance with fluoroscopy, if it's a very long procedure, that you might see some reddening of your skin. Now again, after the procedure, that reddening should go away, but we are up at that too gray level, so it's possible that it might happen. Um, acute radiation syndrome. Now you need a whole body dose really to see this type of syndrome, and when they do fluoroscopy they're only imaging one small part of your body, so I don't think we ever get to that whole body threshold uh, for any type of fluoroscopy. So you just, you won't see that, I don't think. So the next type of effect we'll talk about is the stochastic effect. So in this case, any dose you receive increases the probability that this effect might occur. Now, either you have the effect or you don't. It doesn't get worse in intensity. You know, it's one or the other. And as your dose goes up, the probability that this effect will occur increases. And what we see in the case of x-ray imaging is the more x-ray imaging you get, the greater your risk of this effect happening. And the main effect we're talking about here is cancer. So what we've found is over a lifetime, so if you take in the normal amount of imaging a person might get over their lifetime, it could increase their probability of developing cancer later in life by about 0.3%. So if you look at a normal lifetime risk of cancer, all of us have about a 42% chance of developing cancer in our lifetime. Now, if you factor in the amount of imaging we might receive over our lifetime, maybe you fall off a skateboard and you break your arm, you have to get x-rays and that sort of thing. It happens. So 
If you factor all that in, now your total lifetime risk would be something like 42.3%. So a tiny little increase in the probability. But hey, think about the benefit you got from those imaging studies. Like, right, the doctor was able to make sure my arm was set correctly, got me all fixed up. I was ready to go. So the benefit we receive, I think, far outweighs this tiny little 0.3% increase we might see. Now, we also see that in pediatric patients, that this stochastic effect is a little more profound. There was a study of patients who received CT scans of the brain as a child. And what they found was there was evidence for an increase in pediatric brain cancer occurrence in these patients. This was published recently in a big study, you know, hundreds of thousands of patients, and they followed patients from the 70s all the way up through the mid 2000s. Uh, to study the effect. And what they found was there was a 12.7% increase in the risk of getting a brain cancer in these patients after receiving a CT scan, if you consider a normal dose from a CT scan of about 10 milligray. Now, what this doesn't mean is that 12.7% of the patients developed a brain cancer. It does not mean that at all, not even close. What it means is a 12.7% increase in their risk. So typically what we see is the risk of someone developing a brain cancer would be about 3.1 people per 100,000 will develop a brain cancer. If you increase that number by 12.7%, what you see is for this population of pediatric patients who had CT scans, their risk was about 3.4 five people per 100,000 developed a brain cancer. So again, a tiny little increase in risk. But again, what was the benefit they received from getting these? I think it far outweighs this tiny little risk. Other things to remember about this study was, again, what they found, the higher the dose the patient received, the higher their risk of developing a brain cancer, right? That makes sense. That's the definition of a stochastic effect. And what they saw was, the average dose to the patients who actually developed a tumor was something like 76 milligram of dose, right? What is our average dose from a CT scan? Maybe about 10 milligram. So again, this was like seven to eight CT scans that these patients received. They received that much dose, and those were the patients that developed the brain cancer. So if you keep that dose lower, the risk of getting the brain cancer now goes down, back down to closer to a normal level. Now, all of these studies showing an increased risk of cancer has led to a huge amount of work in the medical imaging community to reduce the amount of dose that someone receives when they get an image, you know, image wisely, image gently, improved protocols for how we scan pediatric patients. All of these have been developed over the last maybe 10 or 15 years for the purpose of driving down that risk of a secondary cancer later on in life. Okay, I've been talking a lot, so let's kind of wrap things up. Let's think about what are the benefits of medical imaging? So, I don't know, let's think about the alternatives. What if we didn't have medical imaging? And say you hurt your arm falling off a skateboard and you went to the doc, and the doc says to you, uh, let's like, we'd like to do exploratory surgery, see what's going on in there. I'd be like, oh, whoa, wait a minute, doc, put the saw down. You know, it's just a little pain in my arm. I don't think you need to go cutting things open right? I don't want to do surgery for a broken arm. And there are some studies, I found one study at least, where they talk about mortality rates for exploratory surgeries. And they found a mortality rate for these laparoscopic laparotomy surgeries of about 12%. Now, it's a little biased because these patients were probably already sick, and let's say they got a CT scan instead. They might have still died. Who knows? But still, a 12% mortality rate for exploratory surgery? No thank you. Or what if you go to the doc and she says, well, I'm not really sure, but I got these pills and these creams. Let's give that a try. See if that helps. You know, I'd rather go to the doc where the doc says, hey, let's do an image. Let's do a study. Oh, from that study? Yeah, here's the problem. Now let's fix it up. I want to be for certain. I don't really want, you know, trial and error on what might work from my doctor. So if I go and she says, hey, I'd like to get a CT scan of that, see what's going on. Yes, that's what I want. There's a benefit to that because right away, you can tell what the problem is. The doc gets you fixed up, sends you on your way. <clears throat> In fact, when we see that 
modern medical imaging became mainstream and well, um, was widespread across the medical community, we saw exploratory surgery rates plummet from the 90s to 2006 when this happened by greater than 60%. Most exploratory surgeries nowadays are done endoscopically. They make a small incision. They put this endoscope in. And what happens? Well, these endoscopes have cameras on them. So when they're doing exploratory surgery, they're using imaging for that surgery. That's how helpful medical imaging is. Now, for like CT scans and x-rays, we are getting a radiation dose from that. So can that be harmful? Should we be scared of it? You know, the CT scan is not some sort of portal to another dimension. I just don't see why we should be so scared of it and run away. I don't think that's necessary. Think about it this way. The side effects from it. Well, we need a dose of about 0.7 to 1 gray to really start to see dangerous side effects from radiation. And our doses from typical medical imaging are way below that, you know, orders of magnitude below that. Now there is fluoroscopy, and there's a small percentage of fluoroscopic procedures that have higher doses. So maybe you start to see a deterministic effect, but in general, those effects will go away after the procedure. So again, we're far below these doses in general that cause effects, so I just don't see deterministic effects being a problem. Now, cancer, that is a thing. We have seen an increase. The more imaging you get, the more increase you have for developing cancer later on as a, as a response to that. So should you go out and get a CT scan every week? Absolutely not. You should only get this imaging when it's absolutely necessary. But when it is necessary, I don't think the cancer risk is a problem, right? So maybe, but, and again, Remember, the medical imaging community over the last decade to 15 years has really driven down the amount of dose it requires to get an image. So we've gone so far down that these risks from cancer have decreased way down with that. So it's just not an issue anymore. So I don't see how the radiation we get from medical imaging is really harmful necessarily to us. In fact, I can see how helpful it is. I mean, in my case, I got, I got fixed right up after I was stupid enough to get on a skateboard. So in conclusion, I just don't see the harmful effect of radiation from medical imaging. But if you're ever in a situation and you're concerned about the radiation, what you should do is talk with your doctor. Say, hey doc, is this imaging necessary? Um, is there another type of imaging, maybe an MRI you could do to get the same information? Um, talk with your doc. They know everything. You should really figure out with them what's best for you. And again, I've left references and links to all the information I've put in this video down below. So if you're interested in learning more, check it out. So I think that's about it, guys. Um, I'm going to try to switch to full screen now and kind of uh, finish things up. The full screen's not working. There we go. Now we see it. So again, thanks for listening, guys. That's about all I have. If you have questions or comments or concerns about anything I said, please leave the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer. Hey, if you have a suggestion for a video I should do, leave that down below. Who knows? Maybe I can make a video for you. But anyway, thanks for talking. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope this is helpful, and we will talk again soon.